Hi there, thanks for joining us in this session of Indigenous Perspectives, where we're sharing our stories and learning together. Um, so we want to tell you a little bit about who we are and what we what it is that we're doing here. So we're a group of uh, Indigenous and non-Indigenous colleagues who have a lot of experience, uh, over 100 years of combined experience working uh, in and with Indigenous communities. And so what, what we're hoping to do is to share our different perspectives um, our different knowledge and experiences with Canadians to help build awareness and understanding about Indigenous interests and issues. We know this is a really complex topic and often a lot of Canadians weren't, uh, didn't learn a lot about Indigenous peoples and communities in school and so we know that there's a gap and, and we want to help be part of connecting the dots for people and organizations who would like to do more in working with Indigenous peoples. And so I'm Anne Harding. I uh, am here in Treaty 7 territory where I was born and raised. And I'm very privileged to be working with many Indigenous colleagues to continue my, my learning journey as a Canadian. I'm of um, English and Welsh and Swedish ancestry. And I'm just thrilled to have spent the last 15 years working um, working with and building relationships with Indigenous communities and people. And so I'm really happy to have uh, three friends here to, to share their stories with, with all of us as well. So Tania, I'll ask you to share a bit about yourself. Thanks, Anne. Um, so I am Tania Gwynn. Um, I actually graduated from environmental sciences um, quite a few years ago. And once I went into the working world, um, uh, well, I've always wanted to work with and for our Indigenous communities. And once I started working um, in the environmental sciences world, I noticed that the duty to consult came up and my colleagues were all very fearful um, and had a lot of, well, fear and didn't know the right way to engage and consult with our communities. And um, this is something that I am very passionate about and always wanted to do. So um, having the opportunity to help educate my coworkers, but also making sure that our communities are part of the conversation and the pro projects that are happening in our world today. Um, and so that's where my career really led to. And um, now I'm a consultant on my own and I've been having my own little consulting company about four years now. And I've worked in a variety of different sectors. So as an Indigenous entrepreneur, I'm very proud to be here today. Thanks very much, Tania. Uh, Art, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, good day, folks. I'm Art Cunningham, part of the Cunningham family. Um, very strong, um, proud Métis family, which I uh, benefited benefited from birth, um, being very proud of who I was, never never thinking anything less of, of a Métis or the Indigenous perspective. And presently, I'm the president of Roundtable Consulting on Indigenous Relations, but my background is I spent 35 years in primarily in the resource sector as an Indigenous practitioner, working on, on um, introducing a large part of our industry to Indigenous relations, because when I first started, it was uh, Indigenous people were invisible to the resource sector. And um, and so uh, the visibility became, um, started getting clearer in the 1990s and early 90s. And, and uh, I was part of that industry that had to learn how to interact and engage Indigenous people in the communities relative to the resource sector. And so I spent a large part of my years learning and hearing many different stories and being able to, to interpret that information from the stories and bring them back to the tables of engineers, et cetera, on how to impact or how to in install a project from a resource sector. Made many, many different mistakes. I'm fortunate it was that when I started, nobody else was doing it, so nobody knew I was making those mistakes. But I did learn by that and, and more than happy to share the stories and the learnings. Also, I'm quite proud of my um, 20 years in the volunteer sector, primarily in the indigenous urban community of working in many different venues, uh, 
from United Way board to friendship centers to different other venues throughout the city working with indigenous, uh, urban indigenous community, which, which I believe are one of the most neglected communities out there and under, under heard. So I, I, I bring those many years of experience also to the table again, sharing my many mistakes and the learnings from those mistakes. And, and um, so I'm very pleased to be here and, and be in a resource. And, and as people who know me are more than happy to share my stories. Thank you. Thanks so much, Art. We're happy to have you and happy to learn from your mistakes as well. Uh, Steve, we'll hear a bit about you. Well, folks, my name is Steve Francis. I'm Cree. I'm First Nation. But, you know, uh, I also am familiar with uh, my Métis ancestry. I've got a grandmother who comes from a large Métis family, last name Plamont in Saskatchewan. So by extension, there are a lot of Métis family in my family. And a lot of Indians are First Nations people. On top of uh, my family, what's important to me is about uh, our conversations. Conversations that involve Indigenous people or Aboriginal people, First Nations, Métis, Inuit, given where you might be active or the issue that you might have also plays into who you might want to talk to. So having said that, my, my experience is informed by my legal education. I graduated law school, Ottawa University in Ottawa. I've got a bachelor's degree in political science and Indian studies. And then I've got my, my teachings from my elders regarding culture ceremony. So these things influence how I think and uh, what I choose to share with people. And what I choose to share is a mechanism or way to have better conversations between Indigenous people and others. That's what I'm about. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, everyone. So the, the topic we wanted to explore in this session is this notion of the Indigenous perspective. And we have this in quotes because I think often um, it's we hear in media, and, and maybe it's just for simplicity's sake or for the soundbite, um, this view that there is a Indigenous perspective. Like, what do the Indigenous people think? As if there are not hundreds of thousands of Indigenous people in the country um, and 634 different First Nations, as well as Métis and Inuit groups. Um, but but I hear you know people talk about well, what's what's the indigenous perspective on this, and so we thought we might unpack that term a little bit and, and understand a bit more about how how we talk about indigenous people frames maybe our approach to working with indigenous people. So Art, could you could you share with us a bit about what comes up for you when you hear people talk about the indigenous perspective? Well, what comes up to me, unfortunately, is is that seeking of that one perspective that you're seeking for from an indigenous point of view. My many years of experience, even right growing up in a, in a Métis family uh, has taught me that there is not that one perspective. And when I hear about seeking an indigenous perspective, you're, you're seeking a process. Again, speaks to process of uh, who you're trying to speak to. You that perspective from it. It is a perspective. In some cases, perspective is an is a individual opinion combined with uh, to be a knowledge or based on science, whatever that perspective is. It's no different with Indigenous people. And, and a perspective from a nation or a community or family to the individuals quite, is quite different, quite diverse. So when I see uh, uh, that, that concept or that in perspective, it speaks to me of more of a process. I, I've been learned, I learned, learned through my mistake many times of saying, well, this is how that First Nation feels about it. Well, hold on, you know, yeah. where do I get that authority? Where do I get that information from? And, and, and so I've learned that 
it's okay to say some First Nations, if you know, you have knowledge of some, so some First Nations feel that way. Some Métis people feel that way. But in the context that you can't define what everybody thinks or their own, all that perspective. And again, uh, a perspective is just that. It's a point of view. It means different. We, it has different meanings relative to the to the audience that you're seeking that answer from. So, um, again, it goes back to the process. What you're what you're seeking that, that perspective for, and then then you go down that path of uh, of going to learn what that perspective relative to what you're seeking it for is important. Because what's important here is that process, not 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 trying to find one definition because um, I think that's a pretty hard task to do is trying to find that one indigenous perspective uh, relative to to the audience that you're seeking it from. Thanks, Art. Steve, what are your thoughts? Again, always speaking from my own point of view, you know, I hear the point for you know, the characterization, what's the Indigenous perspective? And I have to think immediately, there is no one size fits all. Just like you might use Indigenous, you might use Aboriginal. So whenever I hear one of those two words, Indigenous, Aboriginal, who are you talking about? Well, you're at least talking about three broad groups, First Nations, Indians, Métis, Inuit, and because they've got a life experience, their own unique history, their own relationship with the, the land where they might be located, it has to be different. Their own ceremony, their own culture, their own language, their own relationships. So I hear Indigenous perspective. It should be Indigenous perspectives, plural, with the S because they are so different, you know, just between Indians or First Nation. And I would suggest that Métis communities, Métis people, regionally, locally, there's probably differences there as well. And I know that's true also for Inuit people, having been told that. So it's just, for me, Indigenous perspective, it's the ability to hear somebody from outside your culture, outside your home, outside your own experience, listen to them and hearing what's important to them. If you do that, you'll learn an Indigenous perspective. Thanks, Steve. Tania, what, what comes up for you? I guess I'm gonna echo a bit of what Art and Steve have already said that um, you know, there's not just one perspective and there's uh, over 650 different uh, Indigenous groups here in Canada, over 50 different languages. How are you going to have one perspective? It's not, it's not going to happen. And um, I, I find that actually to put a different perspective on it is to think about the TRC and how some corporate Canada is implementing it. So if the, T the TRC is saying we need to hire more Indigenous people in the workforce or we need to have inclusion of the Indigenous perspective in, let's say, our libraries and archives Canada, um, a lot of companies are hiring one person to speak on behalf of 650 plus First Nations or Métis communities. And it's, um, it's not fair and it's it's not, um, it's not a good, easy job to do. Uh, so I would recommend that there's multiple perspectives at the table, multiple different Indigenous groups um, to bring this perspective and better understanding and that education. Um, I often hear that, uh, why do we always have to have Indigenous people at the front of the room? Well, the scales have been tipped the other way for so long with non-Indigenous people speaking at the front of the room and leading everyone into a particular way for assimilation, it's times that, that these scales are tipped and we need more Indigenous perspective at the front of the room in multiple different ways. So 
So I, I guess I kind of took it in a different direction, but yeah, it's not possible to have one um, Indigenous perspective. It's a plural thing, just like Steve said. Thanks, Tania. And, and Art, I guess I'll throw it back to you because I know, so, so okay, so we understand that there isn't just one Indigenous perspective, but so for a lot of Canadians, I think, are still wrestling with this, this notion of the diversity and just starting to really understand the complexity of, of reconciliation of working with Indigenous communities. And so what advice do you have, and, and I'll go back to you first, um, for, for individuals who are seeking to um, talk about or work with Indigenous communities in a good way while respecting that diversity. So what, what should people do? Well, as a Métis, we're born in diversity. I can tell you that right away, uh, you know, with, with Danish grandparents and, and relatives on one side and then Cree grandparents and relatives on the other side, and you're born within the, that cultural diversity of just that itself. And, and again, my, even my own family. I have a sister who's from a First Nation in Northern Canada. I have a daughter who's First Nation in Alberta. And then my other daughters and son are Métis. I have nieces who are First Nation. So my own family is, is hugely diverse. And, and talk about different perspectives. It's, it's huge in my family, but, but so you had to learn to respect the diversity of uh, growing up as a Métis in a Métis family. And, and, and you had to balance, you had to balance a lot of different points of view, perspectives, and, um, and sometimes you heard a lot of things from one side of the family that wasn't too kind to the other side of your family. And, and you struggled in managing how to deal with that within the family unit. So it's not, it's not dissimilar to when you go outside the door and, and you're and you're faced with that when you're working or you're interacting with Indigenous communities. And then you go into the non-Indigenous community and interact and live within that too. But I think the biggest mistake that um, the non-Indigenous community, including specifically the governments, is the lack of respect for that diversity of, of the Indigenous people there. That is as a mistake as soon as the first, I guess, white man stepped on the, on the soil. He thought everybody was Indian. So, um, you know, but it's that lack of respect that continued to grow with that interaction that really has played um, uh, uh, great harm to the relationship of, of our Indigenous and non-Indigenous people in, in this country. And, uh, and, and it is, it is hugely diverse. And again, it, it takes time to respect that diversity, which a lot of time uh, people aren't willing to invest in that time and effort in that respect of that understanding and balancing uh, that diversity within whatever actions or whatever endeavor that they're trying to do. But if you don't take it into account, if you don't respect it, you, and if you don't, and don't include it, um, I believe in most cases you will not be successful in whatever you're trying to do when it comes to any interactions with the Indigenous people in, in in Canada. Thanks, Art. And Steve, what, so, so I'm hearing from Art that taking the time up front to, to really check in and make sure that you're, you're not making that mistake of trying to see one Indigenous perspective. So taking the time to, to understand that. What other advice do you have, Steve, for organizations or, or individuals who want to, want to venture into this space and are just sort of understanding that complexity? Well, I would suggest that you think of the conversations you want to have and you think about the values that are important to you as an individual or that are important to your organization or to your business or employer. And then demonstrating those values. Because I think when art says respect, I think that's a common value for all Canadians, all people. So how you show that manifests that really can be a good thing because no one is going to fault you for acting respectfully, acting honestly, acting truthfully, acting with humility in 
have an integrity. So I would say these values, you know, would help learning about Indigenous history, the Indigenous perspective, whatever it might be, and issues and points of view, values, what those values are for you, and then demonstrating them, and you'll begin the conversation. So that's my advice. Thanks, Steve. And Tania, what, what advice do you have for, for those organizations that are just, just want the one, just want the one representative? What, what would you tell them to do differently? Um, well, I guess I would challenge them with some action. And, um, and this is more on an individual basis. I know that when I go traveling, I learn the history and culture of where I'm going to. And so I challenge those individuals of where they live, work and play to know who lives there. <laughs> Whose traditional territory are you living on? Um, and if you're in Treaty 7 territory, who, who are those nations that you're working with? Um, what's that story, that beautiful culture and history that's there? So that's one thing I would challenge them on an individual basis. The next thing I would, would do is something really simple. And it's, I know we're all social media junkies. If it's Facebook, if it's Instagram, it's LinkedIn, change that perspective. Start following some indigenous perspective. Start listening and hearing those indigenous stories. Um, our media, and our, our social media is geared to different, uh, exactly what we're liking and following. So if you change that and diversify, you're going to learn so much and you're gonna learn that there's not just one indigenous perspective. Um, so those are my two little actions that I would challenge people on an individual basis to, um, to learn more about the diversity within the Indigenous population in Canada. I think that's a fantastic, fantastic addition just to diversify your media intake because that's something people can do, that it's simply a matter of making a different choice. And, and I think as, as all, all of you guys have said is that it's, it's just, it's checking yourself, checking yourself against your values, checking yourself against your assumptions, checking yourself on the choices that you're making for what you consume. Um, to, to really open, if you've opened your mind, great, but now let's actually put some different stuff in there and, and recognize what those different perspectives and lived experiences are. So thanks very much. So thanks very much. We hope you guys have enjoyed um, this conversation, this session that we had here on Indigenous Perspectives. As we mentioned, we're, we're a group of colleagues who are interested in supporting Canadian people and organizations who want to learn more about the history and experiences of Indigenous peoples, as well as what to do about that and, and how we might move forward together um, by sharing our stories and learning from each other. So visit uh, our website at forumrelations.com slash perspectives to see more of these videos, little snippets and, and from our stories and, and experiences, and also to reach out if you'd like us to come, um, we'd be happy to come and do a custom workshop or have a conversation with your organization to help bring a bit more of that connecting of the dots um, when it comes to Indigenous interests so that we can all advance reconciliation and, and working together in, in our country. Thanks very much, everyone.